need to advise first that we have had a request to record and film this meeting. So I need to advise anybody who is recording or filming the meeting that it's fine to record and film us on the presentation, but you are not allowed to record any individual audience members unless you have their written consent to do so. Uh, Sean, my name is Bob Blackman, you know me well. Um, the question I have is that, well, it's, it's two part really. Um, part of the inf infrastructure shows all these different roundabouts, and one would assume they would all be, all be built at the same time as the Junction 10 improvements, so that it will work together, if you see what I mean, rather than being done piecemeal. And at the same time, uh, Mark mentioned that the BRT, Bus Rapid Bus Rapid Transport, would go North Hill, Trinity Street, which doesn't seem to make much sense to me, where perhaps Wickham Road would be an easier route. So that's my question, is whether about the infrastructure and where the BRT would go. The, while, while the whole planning application is what's called an outline application, which doesn't show a great deal of detail, it's really just about principles, mm -hmm. the element of it which is in absolute detail is the Junction 10 works. So in terms of how they work and construction and how they link to BRT, perhaps you can add something. I'm probably going to come back across here and go back a couple of slides, I think. Okay, so sequence one. Um, the blue uh, roundabouts or the blue lines at the bottom there show the highway infrastructure that's under construction. So you can see there that Junction 10 and the roundabouts that go to just to the north of that and run parallel with the east-west link through to the A32 all come together at the same time. So you'll get from Junction 10 through to the A32 all as part of that one um, piece of highway infrastructure. The roundabout just to the north of that is the central roundabout which goes into the district centre and the east side of the A32. That comes a little bit later but it wasn't or it's not, I understand, crucial for the delivery of the motorway junction. In terms of the BRT route, um, that, that, that is the route that's currently proposed to take you into the town. Um, the applicant has done some extensive discussion at pre-application stage with the county council and had some initial conversations with bus operators and to provide a bus rapid transit, so it's all about the frequency and the comfort, comfort and the speed of service that the BRT needs to provide. The quickest route into town is through Park Lane, Trinity Street um, and down onto West Street and there's been ongoing discussions as to the most appropriate route but to get the service frequency uh, to service the site that's the route that's currently proposed before us and um, we are waiting for the final comments from the County Council's Highway Authority on the appropriateness and acceptability of that but initial comments I understand as that's the preferred route. The, 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 bus, the buses will need to come up North Hill, um, absolutely they will, um, and that's one of the challenges that Buckland and the Highway Authority and, and the Buckland engineers have because North Hill is it's a very narrow road, it's a very steep road, and there's not a lot of room for improvement and the signals at the, at the, at the head of that hill at the, the Park Lane Junction, Turnpike Junction, um, there are proposed to be some uh, modifications and some technological improvements to the signals. Whether that's acceptable, we're waiting for the County Council to advise us, but that is the route for the BRT. So if the, if the BRT is going to be like the one in Gospel, that runs on an old railway line, there are, there are new cars, or well, the vast majority of it does, does that mean North Hill and Park Lane are only going to be access only for people who live there? Because if it does, that has a huge consequence on Kiln Road and Old Turnpike. No, no, it doesn't mean that. In fact, I've got a fair bit of the bus rapid transit currently runs on roads uh, as well as the old railway line. And in fact, the BRT is being extended down to Gosport further, which will be running on the road of the old railway line. Uh, and there can be no question of shutting the roads off to everything except buses. So the challenge is for Buckley to convince the Highway Authority that what they're proposing actually works. And if what they're proposing, as far as Hampshire County Council is concerned, doesn't work, then it cannot happen. They need to sort it out. So certainly, as I say, it's, it's not just going to be closed off and, and bus only.
If I understand correctly, by 2029, it'll be approximately five, was it 5,000 houses, or is that more than by then? Sorry, 20, two, over 2,000. 2,100. Yeah. How many, what's your estimation of additional cars going onto the A32 by that time, please? I don't think I'm in a position to answer that question. That's a detailed point that's probably somewhere in the transport assessment that we'd have to go away and have a look at the, the projected forecast traffic generation and also the reassignment of that. Uh, that's something we can take away and put to the County Council. I must admit I'm reasonably surprised at that answer because I thought that's a highly significant impact on communities of what's going to go north and south on a, on a single carriageway road and what happens down in Tuberkin Road as well. There's been, a, there's been a significant amount of work done by the Hampshire County Council using something called a South Hampshire transport model and looking with the developers at what predictions they make as to what will happen. Now, clearly, the principle of Wellborn was established some years ago. And the principle is it is 6,000 houses, nearly 6,000 jobs, so it is going to happen. In terms of the predictions as to which way traffic will go, Wellborn is intended to be very much south-facing and the pre predictions are that the vast majority of that traffic is going to go south on the A32 rather than north on the A32. But there are far cleverer people than me that come up with those predictions and, and work out what they think is going to happen. But on the back of those predictions is exactly how the highway is treated and what roundabouts, road windings and everything else go in and where existing roads have accesses into Wellborn, such as Noel Road. Just picking up on a point you said there, if I may, is you said this well what is going to happen. Yes. Full stop. So say the BRT route up North Hill is seems totally impossible. The volume of traffic going out on the A32, as you said, would be onto Wickham Road is just catastrophic. The people who live there it doesn't don't really matter what the outcome there, that's still going to go ahead. Is that what you're saying or am I summarizing correctly? I don't think anyone's suggesting that anybody doesn't matter. All I'm saying is we're, what we're not here to discuss is the principle of well but whether it happens or hasn't happened. So the big issues are about mitigation. So it's about what is proposed, what is proposed to improve the existing situation. Of course, Fairham and the M27 are seeing, you know, and indeed M3 are seeing the best part of half a billion pounds spent on road improvements at the moment. So there is a huge amount of mitigation going on for the existing traffic. And of course, Junction 10 is a big infrastructure project which is deemed to be absolutely essential for Wellborn and indeed absolutely essential for the highway network and for the, for the motorway network. So there's a lot to be done if for some reason the highway authority should decide with wisdom that the BRT proposals aren't going to work well then our question is going to be well Buckland what are you going to do about that? Now would that mean that perhaps rather than just reserving land for a railway station we're saying well you want to actually build that railway station then because you can't make the buses work so you better make the trains work so but they need to mitigate the effects of their development so it's a question that some people will suffer and there's no avoiding that so people in this room lives could be made if they live in wickham road or live in somewhere else they're going to suffer i think undoubtedly, of the others. undoubtedly as more housing is needed and more housing is built there will be more traffic on the roads and i think that goes on as a comment that that's the truth of the matter. We live in an area in which there are going to be more homes, and that's right across Southampton and most of England. You know, and you know the sorts of targets which governments you know, of any persuasion are heading for, telling us that we need 300,000 new homes a year. A significant amount of those are, are going to be in this area. I can understand that if you started from a blank canvas, nobody would have ever come up with a design of roads, anything like that. You didn't start with a blank canvas. But for anybody in the new development, you can see how that road system will work. What consideration is given to people existing, uh, living in there at the moment, south of the motorway, where Junction 10 is already a disaster. To go east, you have to go down, do a U-turn, and go up towards um, Gospel Road. And to go west, you've got to do that. And go, so you've got two roundabouts and a U-turn. Looking at this, to go west, to go towards Southampton, you've now got five roundabouts. So what 
but I can only see that most people coming from somewhere like Kiln Road or Park Lane would now go down to the Gospel Road, which is already disastrous, particularly at rush hour times. What consideration was given to existing fare and traffic in terms of that new road layout? Well, at the moment, existing fare and traffic, of course, as you've just highlighted, if anybody wants to go, um, you know, to, to make those manoeuvres around Junction 10, they have to go up and come back down the motorway. There is a lot more traffic between Junction 10 and Junction 11 than there needs to be because those people are all doing U-turn movements on the motorway. So, at a stroke, that traffic won't be making those particular manoeuvres anymore. But to go west, but, would you now expect them to go up and round those five roundabouts, or would you expect them now to go down and join the Gospel Road and come up the, old, the A32 to Junction 11? I, I, when I saw that particular arrangement, I thought, oh dear, you know, normally a motorway junction here, which is an all moves junction, of course, has, you know, the two arms off one side and two arms off the other side, which is very simple. Unfortunately, the geography of this area means that that isn't actually possible. So the important thing is, what effects is it going to have? And this is down to Highways England to work out and they have to sign off on this scheme to say that it does actually work and it's satisfactory for their network. So that's what they need to do, but it, but it is difficult. You know, it's, it's there to serve well more. And it's also there to serve the, the wider of existing it's, occupants. It's, of it's also fare. there to serve the existing occupants of fare as well, who at the moment, every time they make that manoeuvre, have got a double back on the motorway. So I'm just asking yeah. what the expectation is for people like us coming off Kiln Road. How would we now go to Southampton? Are you expecting us to go up and round those five roundabouts to go west, or are you expecting us instead to now? Uh, go up round one roundabout, then back to the A32, or go down towards Sainsbury's and join the A32 down there, because I think that's going to become the rat run, and it's already go down there at four o'clock in the afternoon or at nine, eight o'clock in the morning. It's log jammed. Okay. In, in terms of Kiln Road residents and that, that this particular part of the town um, getting to Southampton to use the new junction you would head up the A32 um, under the motorway and then you'd bear left into Wellborn you'd run that east to west link so you go over the roundabout of the A32 there'd be one in the middle of that east west link another roundabout so you'd, head, five, you'd head south and then you'd go round the bottom one into Ferrum Common under the motorway then you'd bear off towards the motorway to join Southampton. In, in I terms of, of going down to Sainsbury's and go around that way. In, in terms of the alternatives, you've, you've heard from the leader of the council about the application putting forward the, the comments that the U-turning may well decrease in terms of the changes between junctions 10 and 11, and the other modelling of the highway package looks at junction 10 and it's looking at the off-site highway works, the off-site reassignment of traffic, where is traffic likely to go if it doesn't use that junction, will it go down to Sainsbury's and try and pick up on the Delby roundabout and um, picking up on junction 11, all that is looking at, is being looked at in the model uh, and that's a, 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 a strategic regional model as the leader of the council said but the county council as highway authority have also asked the applicant to do some micro simulation of individual junctions to make sure that the reassignment of traffic isn't harmful to those existing junctions both in the, the current environment and then forecasting in various stages through to Wellborn being complete. We've got interim, hopefully interim data as well as the final uh, fully developed Wellborn position. So the Highway Authority are very alive to your comments and the comments of others and it's something that they're working with the applicant and their agents and their consultants to make sure that we understand the highway reassignments and traffic impacts. Do I understand when you talked about the BRT coming down through Park Lane and then Trinity Street, is Trinity Street going to be too wet? And it's a very narrow road, or do you mean coming along and down Osborne Road South? You're absolutely right, and my apologies, it'll be down Osborne Road South to West Street, and it'll come back up Trinity Street. I, I realise this is just an outline planning application. There's no linking of the road network from Funkley into the five new roundabouts. If that was included,
included, a link from Funtley to the five roundabouts that would take hundreds of vehicles away from Kiln Road and from North Hill and actually possibly improve things. Would that be worth considering? I don't think it's very likely. I don't think we have any people from Funtley in here, but I think they might have something probably rather strong to say about that as well. You know, Funtley is looking for a significant buffer between Wellborn and Funtley, not to actually link Wellborn into Funtley. So I, I think the answer, the honest answer will be no to that point. It won't be linking into Funtley. And that opposite is somewhat hypnotic to me. Uh, roundabouts, the distance between them is very short. It would be to them and all that like that, but if, if I know the land, the territory, because I use safe literature a lot, I'm concerned that the industrial part of it is uh, between the motorway and the roundabouts. And I know that we haven't had any indication of local roads, but it's, I think, entertaining um, lorries in a long line with high-rate car drivers, this sort of thing. Um, probably nothing can be done to improve all of that. It's worrying me. Okay. Right, thank you for that. Obviously, the issues around traffic management will be for the highway authority who have to basically give this sign off. And they have to say that where the roundabouts are, where everything is, that that all works in highway terms. As you heard from Mark earlier, there's a lot of modelling has to go on still, I believe, between the applicants and the highway authority. And this, <coughs> excuse me, regional transport model which all planning applicants have to rely upon to make sure that these things will work because they're going to cost an awful lot of money to put in that's a lot of private money but it doesn't really matter whose money and they've obviously got to be right.